I'd like to start by thanking you all for the lovely comments you've left in my previous video. It's always such a joy to read them. And as requested, this is the other abstract piece I created before the one I showed you last week. So I will now attempt to describe my thought process on how I've built this abstract piece and talk about balance in a composition. Bear in mind, however, that I have not studied art at school. I am self-taught, so I may use incorrect terminology. And the process I'll describe is entirely mine, and it should not be taken as the correct way of doing things. It is just how I create abstracts and also my thoughts on composition. The very first thing I do before I start any of my paintings is to choose a color scheme. And I usually do this by taking a scrap piece of paper and just testing out some of the colors and how they look together. The best way I can describe the structure of my process is as follows. It always starts with random spots of color and at first I have to say that these gestures are always a bit uncomfortable and that's because like most of us <laughs> the notion of letting go is so contradictory to what we're told about art in general. But it usually doesn't take me long after the very first few brush strokes to loosen up and become less hesitant. Then I might drop another color into a wet paint and let them merge or I like to also connect shapes to create movement. I always get a kick out of seeing the colors mingle and create a different shade. And once I have a few shapes down, I start looking at the balance. For instance, are the colors represented throughout the piece or are they more to one side? Same as for the tonal values of each color. Do I have a good representation of them throughout the piece? Another principle that I'm always mindful of is uh, to create the visual triangle. And you'll hear this term quite often. Here I'm adding a circle of red because I do have one that's over the top there and I have one below. So putting one to the right side, just a little under 
the one that's on top creates a connection between these three and it makes that visual triangle that's very appealing to the eyes because this is how the eyes will read a painting this is how the movement of the eye will carry throughout the painting and I'm adding these dots inside the red shapes because this will give me a connecting pattern to these three red blobs <laughs> that's how they're called <laughs> Thank you. 
All the principles I apply to the painting portion is also true for the doodling part. I like to incorporate white and black markers and vary the weight of the lines just for added visual interest. But sometimes <laughs> my hands are quicker than my thoughts and I tend to add things I regret later just like these triangles which I found a bit out of place compared to the rest of the doodling or the sketchy lines in these trees which didn't fit into the painting. To me, they added too much noise with the little stray bits sticking out from the lines. The other trees that I doodled, although I might have gone several times over the shapes, they're still pretty clean lines. And that's why I considered these ones a bit out of place. It has to do with consistency, which helps keep everything in balance. Because the white gel pen that I used is not waterproof, I was able to correct the outlines by using my regular watercolor brush and I dipped it in clean water and that way I was able to redistribute that white which kind of gave me a muted tone which was not bad. And then um, I decided to add rose gold because why not? <laughs> rose gold makes everything sparkle. And I will apply the same corrective method to the triangles later on. Thank you. 
I've also noticed that my pieces almost always tell a story, even the abstract ones. I guess that nourishes the theorist in me, um, the person that needs to make sense in things, things that I create. But I have to say that I never start with an intention in almost anything that I create unless I'm working from a reference. My paintings usually start very intuitively and then once I start checking for balance and composition, this is when I start reading into it. And then I'll add elements to support the, the theme or the story. So now that we can see the finished painting in its entirety, I can talk a little bit more about the composition. What I was referring to earlier about the visual triangle is achieved by these three red blobs and the way they're positioned, they do form a triangle and this ensures that the eyes will travel throughout the whole painting as opposed to just one or focus on one area and because the red is such a dominant color it makes it even more obvious and i'm not sure if you've noticed but i started the painting with the paper in a portrait orientation and as soon as i flipped it uh, the other way i started reading into the painting and this is when i found my story all of a sudden this abstract kind of became a landscape. At first glance, if you look at this, you're not really seeing the landscape. But to me, because I have installed this uh, patch of color of uh, paint gray um, to the left of the red blob and also a little bit to the right, which is a little bit lighter in tonal value, but it still follows that uh, omnipresent line. And I also have another patch of Payne's Gray right uh, to the right of that semicircle up top, and that creates another visual triangle. I also uh, made sure that I carried the theme of the trees throughout that horizon line, so the horizon line supports those trees. And the other thing I've incorporated in there is a little bit of dotting Oh, well, quite a lot actually of dotting in that semicircle. So to me, this could represent the sun. But to the right of the sun, there are little elements that could be interpreted as clouds. And so I added some dots underneath those clouds to create rain. And I've decided to call this painting Come Rain or Shine. 
So this in a nutshell is my thought process for building an abstract piece. I tried to be as precise and descriptive as I could, but if some things are unclear, feel free to leave your questions and comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see, see you later. Japan